Welcome to the future of open source funding uh, here at GitHub. Uh, I know I'm the last person standing between happy hour, so I will not keep you. If you have questions, we'll save it to the end. Um, just to tee up here, uh, my name is Kevin Crosby. I lead open source funding here at GitHub. My background is in tech and venture. I've spent the last 15 years working with early stage startups, investing in technology at the earliest stage, and then also building uh, early stage businesses. If I wasn't doing that, I probably would have done a PhD in economics, uh, mostly focused in labor statistics and quality of life industries. If you ever want to talk shop about that, I'm happy to. Uh, but early in my career, I pivoted very quickly into corporate finance uh, because I freaked out about what academics look like for eight years of a PhD. So that's kind of my background of how I got to where I'm at today. Um, I'm very passionate about working with early stage builders. I think I like the, the excitement of what they work on, helping them be a, uh, successful in their journey, and also helping them define the vision of where they want to go. And this role really helps me catalyze that within open source of how do we fund the future of open source using different types of capital, different programs, different partnerships, and different tools. And so that's what's brought me here today. Um, Beyond that, I have two kids. I like to run. I like to climb. I'm actually a Seattle native, so this was not too far for me to, to come visit and join today. So uh, that's me and my background. Um, a little bit about this topic. I will say, hopefully this isn't a controversial statement, but like open source funding is not new, but it is hard to, to get access to. Uh, if you think about it and the ways to get funded, people look at it from part-time work to full-time work, uh, donations, new business models, new revenue. But on the other side of that, funding is not also normalized in the way to give funding, meaning there's donations, there's investing, there's contract support, there's premium support. Uh, and because of this complexity of how people operate on giving and getting funding and their lack of uh, overall normalization, it makes it hard to clear the market of funding and capital. And so part of this future of funding really helps me to think through and structure. How do we simplify how people fund, normalize the mechanisms to fund so that more dollars go to maintainers and developers. However, I'll say within that, everyone does believe in the benefits of open source. We know that if you invest dollars to develop, invest dollars to developers and maintainers, they actually spend more time building open source. What that translates to is better quality repos, more commits into the services and technologies that we all rely on, and better outcomes. And on top of that, there's actually increased economic benefits in GDP and innovation. And so globally, if you think about how we get dollars to the system, if we all believe in that premise that more dollars equal better time on open source, more quality repos, and innovation technology built on top of that, gives us a, a core premise of how we should all think about this collectively uh, and help us to start normalize and simplify the funding journey. Um, so I, I think when I joined GitHub about six months ago, I really took this as the premise of how do we actually invest to create impact and use the dollars that we have to both have innovation and sustainable open source technology. Uh, across that, I think about the framework that we invest in across advocacy, uh, collaboration, uh, Sorry, my notes just flickered there. Funding as well. And overall, when I think about this framework for how we invest, it's allowing us to also think about how we can bring in partners. So it's not just us doing it in isolation, but we have a framework for how we invest and build and deliver open source uh, support. Um, so our, our story is, is pretty simple. Like We were founded on open source, and GitHub in and of itself is a platform is what enables that, right? People come here, they start repos, they are often, uh, the first place that they start to code is on GitHub. And because of these pathways, we're already providing tools and infrastructure to help developers get access to technology through our funding platforms. Uh, what that translates to is we contribute upstream and across the ecosystem with a variety of things. We provide products, tools, and frameworks, uh, things like code, code QL, code scanning, uh, depend a bot. We also directly contribute up to our dependencies to make it easier that they have the technology that we rely on be more sustainable. And then on top of that, we're providing community and also educational resources for open source developers. And so when I think about how we show up as an ecosystem, it's not just the, the funding dollars. We're actually providing other resources to the community to be successful. And so as we think about how we invest in the ecosystem, this is one lever that we have to pull on. Um, Transitioning a little bit, we're tra charting new funding pathways. One of the things that I think has been really foundational in, in our approach is that we're willing to test and dog food our own uh, products. And so the first thing we think about there is we build product services and technology that allow us to directly fund open source projects and maintainers. 
And through that, we learn best practices. We help cultivate those best, best practices, measure our own outcomes. And through that dog fooding, we can actually bring that back out to the ecosystem. And we do that by building products and programs that help other people fund open source. Uh, today, that's one of our core products and tenants that we have is making it easier for you to get funding. But by delivering our best practices and learnings through tools and products, it actually can help magnify and create amplification, which ultimately give us an acceleration of this flywheel, meaning more dollars going through the system, more projects getting funded, and more outcomes so that anyone can build a project anywhere and be successful anywhere in the globe. Um, so how are we doing that? I think one of the first things we'll talk about is the GitHub Fund. We are directly investing open source dollars into open source based companies through the GitHub Fund. It's a pre-seed to seed stage venture capital fund. We invest anywhere from 500K to a little over a million dollars to early stage venture backable businesses. Uh, our premise in that model is that when you invest in these types of businesses, we're catalyzing new communities of growth, uh, as well as new paradigm shifting technologies that may not have as much structure in open source today. And so by providing this capital, we actually have a, a flywheel going there. Uh, we've done about 10 deals through, through that investment vehicle. Uh, and most of them are, as probably no surprise, developer tools, uh, open source frameworks that are already having sustainable communities and helping them grow to that next stage. The second program that we have is an accelerator. Through this program, we offer non-dilutive capital to projects that are looking to take their project to the next stage, meaning they've already got a little early traction. They want to think about whether do I turn this into a business, a lifestyle, or something else. And we provide them a cohort-based experience to manage, learn, and grow into that. We think about it both in terms of the core fundamentals of open source, but also the mechanics in, in building uh, a foundational business model, whether it's rev new revenue models, uh, different funding sources, and also talent. And so through our program, they learn those best practices, then go att attract uh, revenue coming out of the, the overall accelerator. And then the last one that we think about is our, our tech platform, as I mentioned. And so Sponsors Today has been a funding vehicle where individuals get funding through, uh, through other individuals or organizations. We've done about 40 million through that platform to date. Um, the idea behind that too will evolve where we have this foundational asset of funding that allows money to go from one individual to another, but you can build additional experiences around the peripheral to make it easier for different types of funding models to exist and work on, on platform. And so as I've had conversations with both funders and maintainers, that's kind of a core lever that we're looking at. Like how do we actually create new experiences around the, the funding platform so that developers can get more dollars through the system? Um, core priorities for, for this year have been pretty simple, I would say, is really just doubling down on how do we actually create the biggest impact on our own projects that we fund, as well as simplifying the funding mechanisms through our products and programs, uh, and then last is growing through partnerships. If I just start with the fact that we need to increase impact on our own projects, part of the, the reason for that is we got feedback from our own projects of how do we help? What is best that GitHub and through our partnerships with, with our broader community that we can deliver to give our projects more go-to-market support, enterprise licensing and contract support, uh, recruiting and talent best practices, uh, go-to-market and commercial opportunities across our ecosystem. And that's one way that we build portfolio development, hands-on support for these projects to then go raise additional capital in their next funding round. Um, how we measure that, generally speaking, is follow on funding through a venture vehicle, for example, or an accelerator that they see the growth going forward. Um, for GitHub Fund specifically, we built out a portfolio development function. We've calibrated what the portfolio needs and we, before investment, map what they're looking for in terms of an investment from us. And then we codify that by essentially building internal partnerships or external partnerships to help deliver that value through the, the portfolio development function. For the accelerator, it's a little bit different because it's a cohort-based program. We took feedback from last year around increasing funding, narrowing the topics so that we got more value to the projects, and as well providing mentors or expertise around the how we can help the projects get specific advice to be successful in their category. Uh, a couple things that you'll see coming come through this year. One, we narrowed the topic to AI because we found early asks around the complexity of building open source AI uh, is, is very overwhelming for a lot of these early stage companies. And by providing that infrastructure and a cohort-based experience, they then get the value to be successful to raise capital down the road, 
either from corporates, individuals, or venture capital. So that's what we're, we're thinking about increasing impact on the accelerator. Uh, for simplifying funding, one of the things that's been very interesting from a product perspective is when we first built it, we made it such that individuals could get funding and market themselves. And I think one of the core learnings of that is that you had to have a brand as a developer to go get funding. That's really hard if you don't want to chart that path or if you're trying to find funding from corporations or, or even venture. And so we're trying to find new ways that we can simplify that onboarding journey, normalize how funding happens on the platform, and also help developers uh, communicate with funding uh, funders on the platform. And then through that mechanism, allow them to communicate back and forth on how they measure ROI, deliver the value, and make sure that the funder uh, recognizes the value of their expectations when they do fund. And then the, the last premise on partnerships, uh, as I thought about how we've uh, worked together in, in our kind of core buckets of, of tech, pla tech platforms as well as funding platforms, we realize that partners, both as technology providers and as ecosystem partners, will actually help us drive bigger impact. And so I've been spending a little bit more time really thinking through what partners can do with us, either through increasing reach to developers and maintainers, education, uh, different funding capabilities that we can integrate with, or even capital providers and policymakers that provide new landscapes or different ways of approaching funding that we haven't yet done to today. And that'll help us magnify reach and impact through the way that we're approaching it. Um, so how have we done this year? Uh, we've kicked off 2024 with a couple of really interesting things. One, we solidified our 10th deal in the GitHub Fund. Uh, we actually catalyzed our first ecosystem event where we brought together venture investors and early stage companies. We had roughly 200 billion in management in the room with the funders and uh, startups. And that allowed conversations around how do you actually get deals done and more capital to the, to the companies. Second thing that we did, we actually kicked off the accelerator applications. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we focused it a little bit differently this year from the depth and breadth of open source and narrowed it to uh, building an AI. Um, one of the things that was really interesting about this, this focus area was we got an overwhelming amount of applications from across the globe on different infrastructure that was being built, applications, full stack around AI, and tools that support the AI ecosystem. So it's not just about one category, it's uh, uh, so, still depth and breadth of AI. Uh, and then the last thing that we did was really continue to simplify the overall funding structure on the platform. That enabled us to do bulk sponsorships, uh, integrate with new partners that deliver different payout mechanisms on GitHub sponsors, and also we're looking to simplify the overall onboarding experience so that you can get started right away to either receive or fund directly on the platform without a lot of cumbersome steps. Uh, and we're not done yet. I think one of the things that's been really fascinating um, as I've jumped into this role is the amount of uh, interest in wanting to collaborate and learn. And so I've spent more time talking with funders, whether they're investors, corporates, uh, individuals, foundations, as well as individual maintainers, projects, and developers to help understand what we can do as GitHub as we build these new programs and services and try to codify that feedback and how we build products and services. Uh, on the funder side, it's been really fascinating. I think one of the things that I've, I've heard, regardless of where you're at in your status of building a, an, an OSPO and where you're at in your journey, the idea of normalizing some of the funding structures, how you measure ROI, uh, how you actually develop investment frameworks are not really structured in a way that anyone can pick that up and run with it. So we're doing a little uh, testing with the people that are already using the funding platform to create best practices or archetypes around how to deliver funding to open source uh, and then be able to help educate other funders through that. And similarly on the maintainer side and the project side, giving new frameworks, best practices around project health, how you utilize funding, how you communicate, how you use the funding back to your funders to make that overall uh, a tight loop for, for receiving and giving funding. But more importantly, one of the biggest pieces of feedback that I've actually heard from maintainers is that it's not all about dollars. They actually want other things that help support them as a, as a developer and a maintainer, meaning uh, they could be looking for contractor support, people reviewing issues and PRs, marketing support, design support, a bunch of things that is not really just pure dollars. And often I've heard maintainers don't just want dollars, they want these people to help them be a part of the journey. And so actively thinking through how do we bring those types of experiences into our programs and products so that people can uh, not just rely on the dollars, but other types of, of funding and support. 
Second thing, uh, the next thing that we're really thinking through is that it's not just GitHub alone that's doing this. I, I kind of mentioned this a little bit before, but the broader lens that I've been really interested in is the amount of support that we've had from individuals that are both funding projects and, and developers that they care about or find interesting or depend on, as well as the overwhelming support of corporate innovation that want to experiment on the platform and try new models. Uh, I've seen overall interest as well from foundations, not just from open source foundations, but social impact foundations uh, that want to normalize, create new infrastructure, how open source is sustained and funded, uh, and educational best practices that want to partner with us. And lastly, the tech partnerships and, and other partners that actually want to bring uh, new education um, resources and tools to the, to the ecosystem. Why I think this is really important is, is, is we look at where GitHub is in this realm. Again, we, we dog food a lot of the products and services and programs that we build, but the, the overarching way that we create a bigger impact is through this partnership lens and bringing everyone with us and educating on the, the best practices or even showcasing how others are, are doing this today in practice on platforms so that it gets across other funders uh, and, and maintainers in the ecosystem. So we're, we're really thinking about this as beyond just us as a funding journey. Um, and so we think about that too, is everyone has a, a role to play. Uh, I thought about this slide as, as, as a, a unique way because every time that I've personally stepped into this journey and had conversations, there's a big ask of like, what's my role? How do I get involved? What can I do? Uh, and I say part of the challenge with that is that it, it, it's not easy. It's not actually easy to start funding open source or get funding from others when you're working on an open source project. So how do you actually figure that out? I mean, one of the things that I think we can do is just normalize that you should just get started somewhere. You can help by volunteering if you don't have dollars. If you have dollars, you should think about the best approach that makes sense for you. If you have an investment framework that you're looking at for how you deploy capital, you should think about that from your structure. And more importantly, when you do write checks to open source, you need to think about what that contractual value is between you and, and the maintainer. Uh, and vice versa as a maintainer, when you take capital from an external person, what commitment are you making to that individual that just gave you capital? And why that's important is because there's some sort of social construct of how people give and receive dollars that still needs to be held uh, throughout the ecosystem. And I think that's the part that we start with. It's simplifying, normalizing the overall construct. Um, and so if we all play a part, getting started is just one of them. Having the conversations is probably the easiest thing to do. Uh, with that, what's next for us? Uh, a couple things. One, really focused on continuing our commitment to funding, both through the Accelerator and the GitHub Fund. We are directly deploying capital into projects that we find interesting, have really interesting communities and growth, have the need for our programs and services and education to actually make their projects successful and more sustainable. Uh, we'll continue to invest in our technology to make it easier to fund and make it easier for others to receive funding through the platform. The second thing we'll be really focused on is helping to grow our overall impact of the projects that we rely on. Um, when we think about the impact, I, I really like the idea of how do we measure success when someone is giving them uh, capital. For startups that we work on, we, we track things like NPS, uh, but more importantly, like are they actually growing as a company or a project? If we're tracking those things, we'll continue to, to hone in on it. So we'll, we'll drive that impact of the projects that we directly fund. Uh, and, and then the last thing is, is continuing to grow our uh, capabilities and experiences beyond the infrastructure that we have today. Uh, when I think about what that looks like, while today it's funding dollars through the platform, tomorrow that may look like future recruiting services or job boards or even bounty services that you could imagine different ways that people could get resources and support on GitHub through our platform beyond just dollars. And if you're a funder, you're also looking at how you could fund through the plat through platform through different types of contributions, whether it's directly upstream, measuring the projects that you actually deliver as discounts or perks to the, the projects, or even helping other projects that are multiple orders down your, your dependency stack get funding as well and measuring their health and capabilities as well. So we'll go beyond just the dollars in the ecosystem uh, to a broader lens uh, of how we think about funding uh, the open source stack. So that's that's how I'm thinking about it today. Um, I'll pause there with questions. Thank you for, for being here for a quick uh, pre-happy hour uh, moment. But if you want to chat and hang out, ask questions, I'm happy to, to do that. Go ahead.
years in the project. I'm wondering um, how you see sort of um, the evolution of the platform for like digital commons funding. How do we, like for infrastructural services, so not necessarily companies getting like ROI on, on their donations. Right? Um, I'll, well, I'll, I'll First, address first thing, thank you. I think that's really interesting to have marketing on the platform. Uh, I think one of the conversations I had at Universe was directly around that. How do I actually give it uh, awareness of my project, not just through Marketplace or the Explore tab, but beyond that to other funders? I think that'll continue to grow as an opportunity. Um, and then also not just digitally, but through networks and programs that we can put in place. I think that one's really interesting. Uh, from a corporate perspective, they also have the same appetite of emerging or core technologies that could be interesting for their build by decisions. Uh, and they don't really know where to go. And so I think we can actually help with that and then make this matchmaking, so to speak, with, with funders and, and projects. Um, as far as like non, uh, non-open source projects being able to get funding? It's an open question. I, I don't think we put enough uh, time into how we could structure that on the platform. Um, I will say I'm not opposed to continue to explore that as, a, as an option. I think the, the core premise, though, is how do we help the maintainers and the contributors get funding directly through the platform and do it on their terms and make it really easy. The secondary piece of that is the funder also has to be able to understand the, the construct of how they're funding. And so if we can find a path that makes sense for everyone and the developers and maintainers get funding directly through that, I think that's something that could be beneficial. Great question on how to measure the, the value as well as the price of the asset. Is that kind of the way you're... You, you... Yeah, I mean, there's no price, right? Yeah. So you're going to know, like, serve it into there. Uh, so you, I'm assuming that that, that helps with necessarily being more expensive for them. Yeah. And you don't have to share it. Yeah, we haven't shared anything specifically on this topic. I will say what I find interesting in the realm of measuring value creation, uh, we've done some reports with, uh, there's one on the EU on measuring the impact of open source and innovation. That's actually where one of the studies came from. So we, we, we have that ability to start to measure it. Um, even on uh, some other academic reports around the value, the other one that I, I, I pulled in there is, uh, how funding helps to increase quality of repos. So like that re, that, that the, the data that exists in there can't help to measure it. Um, what I will say is we can probably do more on, on helping to define that. Uh, I think one of the areas in, in kind of a, a prelude to Keras conversation on the state of funding uh, is that specifically. Like how do we actually leverage the data to actually articulate what funding actually exists uh, not just from an underlying supply chain, what's it valued at, but like how much is that actually going to be around? What's the total state of funding? So more to come on that. Uh, I also just think the overall experimentation is probably a good lens to see if you can find market clearing prices. Um, we haven't done anything like that as well, but also interesting things to consider. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, no worries. Of what they want already. And so, um, do you have any advice for navigating that space? 
I think certainly there's an education component on like what a broader category looks like in the grant space. I mean, that's pretty consistent, not just with the open source, but I would say broadly with, with grants. They either have a very specific thing that they want to fund and they write a grant for that, or it's such a wide aperture that they don't actually capture the right thing that they want. And I think we could probably help them shape that with, with open source specifically. Um, I'm happy to, to chat afterwards of like what we could do to, to help. We did launch a uh, social impact uh, hub to help uh, foundations come on and actually like engage on GitHub and manage their platform. I think that there's something that we could do there with the funding side as well. So happy to, happy to chat more on that one. Cool. Thank you. So sorry. <laughs>